Controls and graphical style, uh, it has really great sound effects and music and the atmosphere in the game and it has this totally awesome story. And it was made by Kyle in five days. And I was totally blown away by this. I was like, oh shit, how, how, how is it possible that Kyle can do this game in five days? Because I compared it to the game that I had been working on for two years, which looked like this at that point. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, there might be something wrong with the way I'm doing this stuff. And the reason why this is just an empty black window, it's not a Doom 3 for me if you <laughs> And the reason was that I started working on the game engine before I started making the game, so I decided to spend a lot of effort working on the game engine, and that really didn't get me that far. So, and I figured that, okay, I'm actually more interested in game design than building game engines, so I think. It's way better if I actually start doing games, so that way I can actually maybe learn something from this process. And I started a website called Clooney Games, and the idea of Clooney Games is that every month I would create a new prototype that was made in under a week. And I started out with Chicken's Bosses Marbles. Uh, it's a game that I made in three days, and it was somewhat popular. Uh, but I knew I was some, on something with this whole prototyping thing because I got my first ever business email uh, after, uh, after releasing Jimmy's Boss's Marbles. And the business email basically said that I saw Jimmy's Boss's Marbles and I think it's a really cool game. Would you like to turn it into a bigger, more commercial game? <laughs> I was like, okay, this sounds good. <laughs> then it said, uh, I'll uh, pay you $500 to do it, and the deadline is in uh, two weeks. Uh, <laughs> and then it turned out that it was some casual game developer that had been hired to do this match free game, and then he had seen my game and he thought that, well, this guy can save my ass because I've been slacking off for <laughs> months, and I replied LOL to this email. <laughs> So anyway, after Jim's Lost Marbles, I made a bunch of different prototypes uh, every month uh, about different subjects. And some of these were really bad, and some of these were pretty decent. And it was in June 2007 that I made Crane of Physics, which was a five-day prototype. And an interesting thing happened because uh, this is the number of downloads Crane of Physics had, which was released. So I thought that maybe I might be into something with this whole Crayon physics, the prototype thing. So I decided, and it was the beginning of summer, it was June. Uh, so I decided that I'm going to spend the summer working on a bigger game, and that would probably be Crayon physics deluxe. And I figured that I'd have it done by the end of the summer. And then I spent the summer watching reruns of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> then the summer ended, and um, I was supposed to go back to school, but I lied to my parents that I'm, I couldn't find an apartment in Helsinki, so I'm going to take a six-month break from the school <laughs> and work on Crayon Physics Deluxe a bit more, and it wasn't done after that, so I had to take another break and then another break. And the end result is that Crayon Physics Deluxe totally fucked up my education. <laughs> but I actually got it done, and it took me almost two years to do the game, so... Uh, so I'm going to talk about, uh, I actually need my notes for this, which I left conveniently in my um, backpack. Uh, we're going to talk about, I found this uh, online, this one article. Uh, which is about actually making uh, art or sketches. And I found it to be, pretty accurate for uh, my view of making uh, games through prototyping. So, oh yeah, in case you're actually wondering how to do a game in seven days, because I think there might be some people here who, don't, who are suspecting that you need to have uh, lots of things in order to do a seven day game, I highly recommend that you use the fill this game development method, which is just fucking do it. <laughs> And read this article, uh, How to Prototype a Game in Under Seven Days. This is by the Experiment the Gameplay Project Cast. It's an excellent article uh, on the introduction of how to do prototypes. And it has a lot of excellent tips. Because there's actually no magic in making prototypes. Uh, just 
I can do it. <laughs> What's the worst that can happen if you try to do a game in seven days? Well, I think the worst thing that can happen is that you fall in love with your first prototype and you end up shipping a game like this. <laughs> <laughs> But I think more likely you'll just end up wasting seven days. And it's not like you've even wasted the seven days, you spent them uh, learning this new skill called prototyping. And I think you actually, if you're, uh, you have to be a decent uh, programmer, not, not a good one, but like you have to know how to put graphics on screen. And if you can do that, you can probably do a game in seven days. You just have to give it a decent and fair chance to do so. So let's go on to the article, which is also stolen from online. I highly recommend that you write this one down as well. Uh, it's about article about making art, not about making games, but it has lots, lots of good points, so I'm going to read it out to you guys. So number one point, uh, quality through quantity. Uh, don't get hung up on making this one piece good. Make ten and one will certainly be good. And this is very true. 90% uh, of everything that you do is crap. So, and crayon physics was the tank prototype that I made. So, kind of um, don't mix generating and editing. When you're making a piece, don't stop and get judgmental halfway through. If it's a piece of crap, get that piece of crap out of your system. Don't try to fix it mid-flow. Finish it and move on. Uh, know when to judge. After you've completed a piece, look at it and decide what direction you want to go in next. Make a piece of art, look at it and make another. Uh, don't be afraid to reuse elements. Uh, if each piece has to be unique, then you're, doing, then you're going to get hung up when you create some bit that you like. But if you can reuse bits, then you can keep moving. Mm -hmm. Have lots of ideas. Uh, pair with it. Start anywhere. One, once a piece is done, try varying some aspect. Think of all the variables that could have permutations. Uh, get through your first 50 failures as fast as you can. Uh, I don't think 50 failures uh, might be true for games as well. Uh, I don't know. Might be 10 failures, but I know it's going to be a lot of failures when you start doing games. Uh, I don't think that we should be shooting for a place where we no longer make crappy art. A good artist is one who is in motion making lots of art. You're, you only think that they're so much better because they produce so much quantity that their pile of good art has also been uh, accumulated. For every piece of crap that you create, you're one step closer to getting something you really like. Uh, don't even bother fixing a piece. Making art shouldn't be a struggle. You're simply thinking out loud onto a page, photo paper or canvas. Uh, if a product seems confused, leave it confused. Make another piece where you uh, contemplate whatever issues you were wrestling with. Try something different. When clarity arrives, it will come in one living piece, not be Frankenstein together out of single, infinitely reworked, mangled corpse. <laughs> Work fast. Creativity is exciting. If you're not judging while you're making, then you can just throw things together as fast as your mind can move. You're smart. If you don't like what you've made, you'll know immediately. You might not know what to do about the problem you perceive, don't think, don't think of standing there to try things. If your hands are in motion, you can be generating new permutations. The one that you want to pick will come out uh, on its own time. Uh, let your level show. Uh, let the world know that despite having years of investment in your art form, you're still a beginning, beginner who doesn't know it all. Rather than hide your thought process, let your questions be present in your work. You're fundamentally more interesting artist if people get to see what it is that you're struggling with rather than just the final answer. Show your work, talk about what you still can't understand. Uh, don't hide your failures. If you're only willing to show those perfect pieces that you're aspiring towards, you're 
never going to display 